Today, I want to use the screencast to talk about how to use Git branching to introduce new features to your code base. I'm going to use the project Lunch Bunch as an example throughout this screencast. It's a web application developed by my colleague Matt Conway to answer the question of where should we go for lunch. I'm not going to talk too much about this app itself because we're just using it as a Git repository. Uh, it's open source project host on GitHub. If you're interested, you can take a look. I have the code on my local environment. And if I run git branch, uh, you can see that I only have one branch local, which is the master branch. Git branch dash A will give me all the branches, both local and remote. You can see that there are three remote branches. If I do a git log, it will show me all the recent commits. Now let's say I want to add a new feature which will help people to figure out how to carpool to their favorite restaurants. And to develop this feature, I want to create a new branch. The reason I want to develop the feature on a branch is so that I have a isolated environment for all this feature development. So I don't have to worry about other people's commits while I'm developing this feature. I'm going to run git checkout dash B and then the branch name to create a new branch and also switch to that branch. We're not going to do real programming here, so just pretend all we need to add this feature is just to create this file. Let's say I'm in the process of my feature development and my colleague asked me to look at some urgent bug. At this point, if you look at git status, I have introduced a new file, uh, so I will stage this change and make a commit out of this. And the commit message I'm going to give is just whip, which means work in progress. And I'm going to push up this commit to the remote GitHub repository. And the reason for this is if somebody else look at the branches, they can see that this whip commit is going to be on top of this branch. So they understand this branch is still under development. Now I'm going to switch back to the master branch and to do the bug fix, again, I'm going to create a new branch called the bugs fix branch. And I'm going to create that off master. The reason is that I don't want to bring in my feature development code into this bug fix. So I can just focus on fixing this bug. Now let's suppose all I need to do to fix this bug is just to add this line in the code, in the controller code. On a real project, I will create a test that will fail to show the bug. And then I'm going to work on a fix that will make that test pass. And let's say we have fixed the bug. And also I have run the whole test suite to make sure that I didn't break any existing code. Now I can make a commit and I will give it a commit message. And if I do git log, you can see that my commit is on top of this bugs fix branch. Before I merge this commit back to the master branch, I want to make sure that nobody else has made any commit on the master branch. So I will switch back to the master branch and I will run git pull dash dash rebase to bring in any changes from the remote repository on the master branch. And in fact, you can tell that there was a commit made by my colleague John to add a restaurant. Now I wanna make sure that my bugsfizz commit works well with his adding restaurant commit. To test this, I want to bring his adding restaurant commit to my bugsfizz commit. And uh, I will run the whole test suite on the uh, my bugsfizz branch to make sure that everything integrates. So I'm going to switch to my bugs branch again, and I'm going to run git rebase master to bring his commit to my bugs branch. And if I do a git log here, you can see that his commit is indeed brought onto the bugs branch. 
And because we did a rebase, my commit sits on top of his commit. The way that rebasing works is Git will find out where the two branches diverged and set aside all my commits and bring in all the commits on the master branch since that divergence and then put my commits on top of these commits. That's the reason you see my commit is on the top. Luckily, there's no conflicts between the two commits. Otherwise, I would have to resolve any conflicts uh, from this rebase. Now that I have brought in his commits onto my bugs fix branch, I'm going to run the complete test suite again, make sure that everything integrates well. And if it does, I'm going to go to the master branch and merge in the code from the bug fix branch. Because we did a rebase master from the bug fix branch, this merge is just going to be a fast forward. I'm going to push up this commit to the remote repository. Now in this case, it's GitHub. Now I'm going to go back to my feature branch. I'm going to do git checkout writes. And if I do git log here, I see that I have a whip commit sits on top. I'm going to run git reset head tilde. And this will bring my local code base back to one commit before the head, which is the commit by Matt and Thais about bump the project Ruby to 192. You can also think of this as just uncommit my whip commit. I'm going to keep working on my feature development. And let's say uh, just two more lines will complete this feature development. You know, and if I do git status now, uh, you can see that I have a change that's not committed. I'm going to stage that change and make a feature commit. Now, if I do git log, you see the feature commit is on the top. Notice that we no longer have that whip commit anymore because we did the git reset. Now, before I merge this commit back to master, we have to go through the same process. I will go to the master branch and do git pull dash dash rebase and pull in all the changes while I did the feature development. And this time there's no new commit. Now I'm going to the feature branch and I'm going to do git rebase master. And this will bring John's commit and also my bug fix commit into this feature branch. Again, I want to make sure that I do the integration testing on the feature branch instead of the master branch. So here I'm going to run the complete test suite and make sure everything still works. And after that, I'm going to go back to the master branch and do a git merge rise, which brings back in my commit to the master branch. And finally, I'm going to do a git push to push my commit up to the remote repository, in this case, GitHub. And you can tell that the commit to master uh, worked, but the commit from my local branch rise to the remote branch rise did not work because it's not fast forwardable. The reason is that we did a git reset on the feature branch. That's okay because we have merged the code to master branch. Now it's time to do some branch cleanup. We'll first delete the two local branches, uh, the feature branch as well as the bug fix branch. And if I do git branch dash a again here, we'll see that there is only one local branch, which is a master. We still have the remote feature branch, which we no longer need. So we will get rid of that as well. So we do git push origin colon writes, and that will delete the remote branch. So now if we do git branch dash a, we see that we have the same branches when we started this screencast. So just to recap, we want to do all the new feature development and bug fixes on new branches. And we always do integration testing on branches. Uh, master should be clean and master should always have working code and deployable.